this vortex. That is a flip phone. It's cool to have a flip phone because you have less of a chance of becoming a cyborg. But one of the downsides is that when you don't want to be a cyborg, they have to punish you for that. And there's like no memory on the phone whatsoever. <laughs> so like there are certain text messages that I've saved from, from different people, like mainly my mom, but you know, my mom and other uh, family members and friends of mine that I think of as family. And so I, I save those messages. I guess on like iPhones and Androids, like you can save like 500 zillion messages. And, um, Cause yeah, it's, it's essentially like a, a little computer that you're taking around with you, you know? Um, but yeah, like me and Ronit, we were hanging out tonight and we were sending text messages to our friend Brad Hinderlinder, who's in Atlanta right now. He's another comic. And uh, he's been in Atlanta for the past couple of years. And we were just thinking about him, so we started sending him texts. And it was so weird, because I was like using this smartphone. And I was like thinking to myself, like, I was like, I wonder if I could get the hang of using this. And I was like, absolutely not. Because it's just, it's so complicated. And yet to think that something so complicated, people carry around with them and they just get used to that complication. And it complicates their life in like all these other ways. But I'm sure that it makes certain things like way more convenient, you know, I know that. But it's like, it's just so weird. Like even like holding a smartphone, I just, like I'm about to die you know <laughs> and that's just such a weird thing like you know I don't I don't want to just be like this annoying person that's constantly bringing this up but it's like you know you notice stuff like this like when when you're not doing what everybody else is doing you really notice that they're doing it non-stop you know like if you go out into the city or anywhere you go, really. I mean, I'm sure you could be in like podunk nowhere and people still have smartphones and they're just, they got this, this little TV that they're carrying around with them. And they're just looking at it. It was cool though tonight, um, this parking lot party, like most of the people weren't on their phones. They were just out having a good time, listening to music, dancing, and drinking. And, eating food off of styrofoam plates and you know having a, having a good time acting like the end of the world is not fast approaching which which is uh you know exactly uh, how the bible predicts it <laughs> but I, I guess we'll just see what happens You know, it never occurred to me that, that maybe I was saving all this stuff for other people. You know, like, I, well, actually it did occur to me um, that, like, if there was, like, a food shortage or something, like, I, I was just buying a bunch of shit, and I was like, well, a bunch of people won't be prepared, so I'm just going to give this stuff away. Like, that was my mindset before, but I didn't think that it would be this fucking serious, you know? Like... If, if all this shit does transpire the way that some people are saying, you know who you are. Dude, I had a PTSD episode over that shit. But I was thinking about it, and I was like, PTSD is actually a gift. 
if you're experiencing it from the future and you're 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 going into a future event that can actually be like a really really cool thing because not only will it prepare you but it's like whenever that actually happens like well you know been there done that you know <laughs> so like it, it doesn't feel as um, insurmountable because you've already experienced it you know inside your head and when you experience it in your head I feel like it's worse because it's just like every terrible outcome that you can possibly think of um, but you know I I'm in like pretty constant prayer mode. Like I'm always talking to God. And I'll go in and out where I'll, I'll be like talking to myself. And it's like I'll be like in this deep dialogue with the Lord. And then I'll just like go off on some tangent about, I don't know, bread or something. And then like I'll come back and I'll be like, all right, Lord. You know me. <laughs> we do this, do we not? Just a constant, like, it's a constant reel of, like, various ranting about different subjects. But God knows I'm fucking passionate, man. I've always been passionate. And that's why it's like, I want to stay here and inspire people. Um, some people think that the tribulations have already, like, they've already started, you know? It's just maybe we were so caught up in our phones that, like, we didn't notice. I mean, there are a lot of people that have noticed, you know, specifically with, uh, not our last president, but the president before that. I think this shit started with, like, the new millennium, with, like, the fucking Bush family. I mean, they're, Bushes are fucking evil. They're, st they're they really are, like, reptiles. But let's not blame presidents. Like, they're all phonies, you know. It's stupid to, like, talk about these motherfuckers as if they're actual people. It's like they're just playing a role. They're just, they're just filling the seat, essentially. It's like, no, you sit here, you sit there, and all these people are going to bitch about you as if those seats mean anything at all. You know, but it's, it's like, I feel like the president themselves does not matter at all. It's the presidency that brainwashes everybody. Just like individual doctors, they don't matter at all. It's the title doctor that matters. You know, it's like people are so brainwashed by these titles because it's vanity. You know, people think that they're important. It's like the same thing as celebrity. It's an idol. So you idolize certain career paths. You idolize certain types of education. You idolize, um, you know, somebody that makes a lot of money or um, somebody that, that's really popular or, you know, they're an influencer. Don't you love that shit? I'm an influencer. It's really creepy when somebody says something like that. There's this comic in the natural comedy scene who's like just pure NPC. And he calls himself an influencer. He's also a pinko commie, but he's probably the nicest communist I've ever met. Um, at least he'll own that he's a communist. A lot of these people are communists, they don't even know it. He's honest about it, but. Um, that's also because he thinks that there's something noble about communism. 
versus all these other people that swear up and down that they're not communists, so they're just, they're just liberals. They're just Democrats. They're just Republicans, you know? <laughs> they don't know. Nobody knows they're a communist. But, I don't know, man. I, I'm just over the labels. Like, I don't even care. Like, I honestly have more respect for a pink okami that, that will acknowledge that they're that way <laughs> versus, like, somebody that just keeps insisting that they're not, but they behave just like one. Um, that's just me, though. <laughs>